All right, I'm going back in. Because the wind out here is the only thing giving action. Just so you know, I'm playing tonight. I just left uh, Jada's Taekwondo class. She got a new belt. Yellow with the black stripe. Does that mean something? I don't know, that's what she is. She's a big deal now. But before I can go play, I gotta get some work done. Like some real work. Like my day job work, but I gotta get it done from here. Like now, right now. Then I'll go play after that. Hold your horses. Well, that took a little bit longer than I thought, but it's still only quarter till eight, so Plenty of time to get some poker in. I think tonight I'm going for a no frills, no thrills vlog experience. We're going up, we're gonna play some poker, and that's it. I don't even need gas. I already got it. I do, however, need to get some food. I guess I could eat at the casino. Do I feel like Chinese food though? I don't know. I'll figure it out. Guess what? I have everything. I know I have everything. I don't even need to double check to make sure I have everything because I've already done it. So I took the suggestion that uh, more than one of you left and just created a list. Now I have a list, now I have everything. I still feel like I'm forgetting something though. I guess we'll see. We'll see how this uh, list idea works out. So although I've already played a session since getting back from Vegas, I didn't really plan to play that night. It just kind of happened. Tonight I plan to play, which kind of makes it feel like it's my first session back. So now I need to go through that whole readjustment to St. Louis poker. Since I didn't plan to play the other time, I didn't do any damn readjustment. I just sat down. Now I'm overthinking it, and now I need to uh, readjust. So what does readjusting to St. Louis poker mean? For the most part, it's just realizing that these players play dolphin tight. And if they're gonna play dolphin tight, then most likely I need to play a little bit looser than I would in Vegas. For a 1-2 game, anyway. Then there's other players that just have no clue what's going on. You gotta identify those players first. Mid-session update, and there is absolutely nothing going on with me. There's nothing going on with me, there's nothing going on with my table, there's nothing going on with my hands, there's nothing going on with my stack sizes, there's nothing going on with nothing. And I can't get anything going on. I have no idea what kind of vlog this is going to be, because I don't have a single played hand recorded. Maybe one. I think I raised with king, queen, I flopped a queen, I bet, and they folded. As of right now, I'm in the game for 300, and I think I have 307 in front of me. How long have I been here? How many hours? There's just really, honestly, nothing going on. Like, why am I here? And I'm fighting the post-Vegas, back to St. Louis, 1-2 malaise. These players play weird, and I can't, I can't take it. Like I said earlier, there's always like a little adjustment period. And I'm struggling with the adjustment period right now. Everything is limp, 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 trap, trap, trap. Slow play, flop, top pair. Like it's, it's not good for my psyche. And I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's tricky to deal with it sometimes, especially when you've come from a game 
where people are raising and bedding and re-raising. And you come to this, and it's call, 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 wind, cool out. You come to this, and it's call, call, call. It's frustrating. I'm not frustrated because I'm down. I'm frustrated because I want to play poker. All right, I'm going back in. Because the wind out here is the only thing giving action. But I'm going to tough it out. What other choice do I have? You know, you guys know who I have patience like. I wasn't going anywhere. I was scared of that too. What's that? I didn't think you hit the king. I was scared of that flush yeah. <laughs> Part of my game against white guys is to bet against black because I know it scares you guys. <laughs> so if there's a lot of black on the flop, I'm going to bet. <laughs> Sometimes I have it. <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes when I make these videos, I have an idea. I normally have a pretty good idea of hands that were recorded, hands that weren't recorded, hands that I might do a little graphical overlay thing to talk about, and just a general feeling for how the session went. This session, tale of two worlds. The first part of the session, nothing. 
absolutely nothing at all. Nothing happened. Don't think I got anything recorded. Didn't make any hands. Didn't really lose any hands. It was pretty much even for hours. Then I came out, told you guys about that. You might have picked up a uh, little frustration in my voice. Went back in. I hit every hand I played. Starting with a hand I'm pretty sure that I have recorded when I flopped the set. So, I'm in the middle of editing hands for the next vlog. October 20 something, towards the end of October. I told you I'm in fire editing mode. I wanna knock a couple of these things out pretty quickly. And there's a hand that happened during the session, which was easily the biggest hand of the session that I was, I could have swore I captured on video, but apparently I didn't. So let's talk about it. In this hand, one of the loosest, if not the loosest, most aggressive regular player at this casino is the villain. The hand begins pretty simply. I'm on the button with two red fives. It's limped to me three ways. I make it 15 and I get two callers. We see a flop of four of hearts, five of clubs, nine of clubs. It's checked to me, I bet 35, and the villain calls. Pretty standard so far. Well, maybe my raise preflop wasn't standard, but standard for me. The turn comes at three of clubs, he checks, I make it 65, and he almost instantly check raise shoves for 280. I have him covered slightly, but 280 is still a monster bet there. So I go into the tank. I don't hate life at this point, but I'm not a fan. So go through the permutations of what he could have. What shoving here? Had it been a bigger game, I could have instantly put him on a made hand, as there's not too many flush draws he could have. I would have thought, maybe a set? Maybe he turned a straight? I would have thought turning a straight was most likely, but why would he shove here? I was confused. If it had not been for this for this particular villain, I'm not quite sure what I would have done. But with this guy, I just closed my I just closed my eyes and called. The river came off a complete blank. It was the queen of diamonds, and I show my set of fives, and he shows me ace four offsuit with the ace of clubs. So he flopped a pair, bottom pair. He turned the nut flush draw and decided to shove with his dry ace. Pretty aggressive move there. Didn't work. Gotta respect him for trying. It's funny, had I not been a thinking player, had I been one of those players that's just scared of the dollar amount, like a lot of the players up there, I might have folded. But I legitimately couldn't put him on anything. I mean, maybe he limps in with like ace, ten of clubs. But then, even then, why would he shove? Why would he shove with the nuts? I don't know, that's where one two gets tricky sometimes. Cause these guys will just shove with flush draws. Not even nut flush draws, they'll just, if they have a flush draw, they're shoving with it. Anyway, that was a hand I thought I recorded. Can't believe I didn't, but there you go. Flush came in on the turn and I got shoved on by a guy that just had the dry ace. Doubled up there. A Couple hands later, I flopped an ace high flush against two people and busted a guy. That was a small pot though. I wanna say there was maybe 60, $70 in that pot. Then I picked up queens, one with those. Picked up tens, one with those. I just started winning hands. So, but I don't know what I recorded. I have no clue. But as you can see, it's the end of the night. By the little time stampy thing, you know it's probably, I'm guessing, two in the morning. I need to get to bed. So I'm probably gonna find out a couple hours before you guys find out what actually was recorded and what this vlog is gonna turn out to be. Cause now I'm just rambling and I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. But rambling or no rambling, I need to get out of here. So if you like the videos, hit the thumbs up icon. Make sure you subscribe, that way you get notifications. I'm missing something. Oh, leave me a comment and I'll respond. 
Probably. This is gonna be a mess of a vlog. That's how it is sometimes. That's how it is most times. So in essence, the session was pretty much just like any other poker session. Except all the dead card deadness was put on one end, and all the card liveness and card goodness and run good was was squished up at the end. I guess it's better to have the run good than to not, right? All right, enough rambling. I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys later. Here's how forgetful I am sometimes. I don't even think I gave you guys the results for tonight's session. <sighs> Do I need to put that on the list? Give results? In for 300 tonight, out for 829. That's the results. How did I forget to do that part? I'm losing it. I'm losing it. All right, so for real, that's it. I'm out. Have a good night. What is it? 10, 7, 5. All diamonds. Ace of diamonds. I just left Jada's take one. I just leave. I just left Jada's Taekwondo class. <laughs> Against most of the players in that player pool, that probably would have worked. Against me, it won't.